What is up everyone, almost a week ago I hit the legend rank and number 22 on the global leaderboard and today I'll showcase the team I used to hit that. Also, before I get any comments about this, yes, I'm wearing a Christmas sweater in April, it's comfy, okay? Deal with it. Anyway, the team, Shadow Magnazone, Shadow Gligar, Azumarill, I cannot recommend this team enough. It is so, so much fun and it just works. Shadow Magnazone, Azumarill form a great core as Shadow Magnazone really has to worry about ground types, fighting types and fire types, which Azumarill just covers perfectly and then Shadow Gligar is an extremely flexible pivot in this current meta. It, there are definitely hard counters to Gligar around, but the most common one is Skarmory, which if they switch it into Gligar, that's like fine, because you can farm it out with Magnezone afterwards, and Magnezone with energy is just extremely dangerous. Anyway, we're gonna head into these battles, starting off with game number one, where I pick up a very, very bad lead with my Magnezone into Annihilab. I switch into Gligar, which will always be your pivot in this line. Out comes Shadow Wishcash. I always... Uh, like to just throw area ways here before scald this time i could have thrown dig because I, I paced them since i had like a little bit of a slow switch but generally wish cash will be kind of quick to switch in and even in that case i just throw area ways because even if they let that go that's like totally fine as you've done enough a uh, chip to the wish cash already this one decided to shoot which is great because i can now go for a dig this is the buffed as i got the drop so i won't do that much but that's fine at this point I'm okay with shooting my Gligar again. I know I'm not going to be able to get the farm down here, but I want to get both shields down. Because if I can get both shields down or switch advantage here, I think I'm setting up my Magnezone for success here. They shoot up the Aerioways. This means they can get off this Skull. This will knock out my Gligar at this point. Magnezone will be aligned to Annihilate, but now that shields are down, that is not too bad. I Volt switch down to Whiskash. I know the Annihilate is uh, uh, 8 turns off the Night Slash, so I get to the Wild Charge before they can get there. Wild Charge will definitely knock out the Annihilate, bye-bye, and in the back is a Skarmory. My defenses are dropped, but Magnezone doesn't care. Steel Wings are double resisted. Wild Charge will certainly knock out the Skarmory. Say bye. Bye-bye, Skarmory. GG's. Another terrible lead in the next game. It is Whiskash. Probably the worst lead you'll see uh, with Magnezone. I have a plan for this though. I go into my Gligar, just throw area ways immediately, especially for the Shadow Whiskash. This already puts him in range where Wild Charge for Magnezone will knock out. So I like to just throw it immediately. If they let it go, that's great because now they're in a Wild Charge range. If they shield it, that's honestly also incredible because you've then gotten shields down. Out comes Gligar. They also dropped my attack, by the way, which is really, really bad, because that means now two area oases from my Gligar will not even come close to knocking out their Gligar. Whereas if I don't get the drop, they may even have to use a shield. Whereas now they definitely don't have to use a shield, uh, which is kind of awkward, but maybe, maybe still fine. Let's see. Our area oase comes out, brings their Gligar into the red. They throw an area oase here. They threw it kind of early, which is great for me, because that means they'll be unlikely to make a dig if I go for a fold switch from down here, which I do. Don't reach a dig. That's great. Uh, like I said, the Whiskash is now in range for a wild charge. So if they were to come in with that, I would just wild charge it, take a shield. But out comes Annihilate. I'm guessing they're going to shield up this mirror shot, uh, expecting wild charge. So I go for the bait. They uh, seem to be tight with me, which is, which is totally fine. I'm going to shoot this up. I have a wild charge stored. I'm going to take the final shield here with this wild charge. Also, I decided to wait a turn there to see if the Whiskash would come in because I would have swapped it to my zoom roll. And also, that meant that the counter damage registered before the wild charge to buff my defenses, which means I actually still keep my uh, Magnus Zone uh, alive on the bench for later. I don't think that will make much of a difference in this matchup, but I think whenever you're dealing with self-debuffing attacks, it's always a good habit to make sure you're waiting turns to make sure... Uh, you know, attacks hit before you debuff yourself. Anyway, we take out the, the Whiskash with Azumarill. This Annihilate has a Shadow Ball stored, but Azumarill is bulky. It can take it easily. We go for the play rough, and that's a GG. That was a line where my opponent had three counters to Magnezone. Annihilate, Gligar, and Whiskash. And Magnezone still managed to put in work. GG. Here we go. Another ground type. Shadow Gligar, but this is truly not bad for Magnezone at all. This matchup is part of the reason I'm running Magnezone over, over other electrics, especially Charger Bug, because you have so much play into Gligar. Uh, if my opponent had let that wild charge go, it would have brought them deep into the yellow, so they actually decided to shoot it up. Now that I've gained shield advantage, I decided to bring out my Gligar. They have an Umbreon in the back here that they bring in now. This is kind of unfortunate because it will be able to eat up all this energy. 
I think I would have preferred to throw the Aerial Ace into their opposing Gligar a little bit earlier to put him in range where a Wild Trap would, would knock out. But this is also fine because I can double dig this Umbrian and put him into a range where I can get a big bubble down with Azumarill. Azumarill with energy, especially Shield Up, is also pretty dangerous. So if I can get a bubble down, that would be really, really nice. They're now in the red. Yeah, we're not going to bring out Magnezone. Magnezone is extremely squishy. Wouldn't we really be able to take the foul place this Umbreen has stored up. So instead, we do go with, with the Azumarill. Can eat up these last resorts super easily. And with the buff bubbles, uh, we farm it down very, very simply. They had uh, the Gligar into the lead. So I'm expecting an, an Azumarill answer in the back. But unless it's like a Registeel or a Bastiodon, this energy will do a lot. Even if it's like a Lantern or something. And some being Bastiodon though. So that is pretty bad. Um... Because it will be able to eat these player offs like it's like nothing. Like that did, that did absolutely no damage. Out comes Gligar now. I remember they threw a little bit of energy earlier into my Gly. Um, so this is this is not, uh, not, not, not the worst. They don't have that much energy. I can uh, farm up a little bit. Throw a wild charge here. I was expecting them to let it go and just start to sweep it past it on. But they're trying to get shields down. Which also makes sense. The shield is up. Honestly, I, I hadn't really been counting in this game that well. So I thought this may be an area ace. But it did end up being the dig. So good shield by me. This is just an area ace, however. Uh, but since I am double debuffed, like, it will still do a lot. Like, that's a double resisted attack. But I'm a Magnezone. And we debuffed our defenses with Wild Charge. So, yeah. That's a lot of damage. Uh, I have a wild charge stored for the Bastion, but I'm actually going to switch out with that energy. Knowing that I win the charge stack priority versus Bastion later, I'm going to opt to save that attack for later, just so I don't lose turns in the process of throwing that attack. Because throwing that attack means they sneak in a full free smackdown and they can get to a charge stack earlier versus my Azumarill. Whereas if I save it, they don't get that full smackdown and I may be able to get off another bubble or play rough versus Bastion. They end up throwing a Stone Edge here. They undercharge it, because they want to have a Stone Edge ready for my Magnezone. They, I think they pretty much do have one now. So I have to throw my Wild Charge immediately, and there's hope this knocks out. And it does knock out the Bastion. Shadow Magnezone's Wild Charge is just so, so strong. All right, Alolan Sand Slash Lead. I actually saw a ton of these. Versus Shadow, I like to just go straight Mirror Shot. This, this, this is a regular one. I decided to go straight for the Wild Charge. So Mirror Shot would not do a significant amount of damage. And this alone in Sand Slash decides to let it go. They try to call the bait. Bye bye. And they concede the match. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, this team also can win leads, by the way. So far, I've only shown lost leads, but I do win lead occasionally with Magnezone. Honestly, not, not as commonly as, as losing lead, but this time we picked up an incredible lead with uh, the Mantine. Uh, out comes Trevenant. Uh, Kind of awkward for, for this team as, as a pivot, to be honest, as they would have up, outpaced my Gligar to a Shadow Ball there, so I was forced to shield up to try to maintain switch advantage. Uh, not great, not great, to be honest, as Magnezone's shield down is pretty bad. Out comes Mantine now. Do have a lot of energy on Gligar, but these area users won't do that much. I'm kind of worried this is like a water pulse bad team, and in that case, that would do a lot of damage versus my Magnezone still. Also, one thing I see very commonly with Mantine lead is Lantern in the back, which at this point will be tough to deal with. So I actually just had to switch in my Magnezone, expecting it to be Lantern in the back, and in that way, I kind of prevent them from farming too much energy with their Mantine uh, versus my Gligar, and I kind of get ahead of the Lantern with my Magnezone, but it ends up being Whiskash, which is just absolutely terrible. This game is not over just just yet though, I still have a Zoomerol for this Whiskash. I also took a shield with my Magnezone versus Whiskash, which is good. We're now even shield, and I still have my Gligar as well. So even though I switched in my Magnezone to free rich of Whiskash there, still not too bad. Uh, by the way, that was a really quick swap by my opponent there. Once the Magnezone uh, came out, they, they didn't even take a full switch on our Mantine. So that may also uh, make this kind of difficult. I was hoping they would lead, let, let at least one through, but no, they uh, they were very fast on that swap. They have a lot of energy on this Viscash now. These map tunnels won't do that much, so I let them go. Maybe I should shield though, because they, they do, do more than uh, than an aerial ace, I would I would imagine. Anyway, gonna go for another play rough. Doesn't knock out this Viscash. Gonna let this next move bomb go. Oh yeah, I'm just putting it all on Gligar now. I'm really hoping Gligar can throw another aerial ace into the man team. Comes out now. Uh... I don't think they'll... Oh, I think I let this go, right? Oh, I shoot it up. Ooh, now they may be able to get to another... 
ice beam or get to the ice beam, but now they actually uh, just throw another area ace and already ends up being pretty much enough. Oh, I, actually, I do reach the, uh, the area ace here. This is huge. We knock out the man team. Now we're gonna, we're gonna get another area ace into this whiskash or another wing attack. I mean, can I bubble down the whiskash now? No, they just barely get to the mud bomb at 1 HP. Absolutely heartbreaking loss, to be honest. Kind of embarrassing, too, after leading an electric type into Mantine. But, hey, well played by my opponent there. GG. Another one lead in the next match with Magnazone into Altaria. Uh, this is technically a one lead, but as you can see, these Dragon Breads are doing a ton. Magnazone... <laughs> It's, it's, it's squishy. It's squishy, okay? It doesn't deal very well with fast move pressure, but as long as the fast move pressure is resisted, you can at least somewhat take it. The way I like to play this matchup is I just go for double wild charge, uh, take both shields, or take out the Altaria, and then I switch it to Gligar. No point in staying in with my Magnazone there once the defenses are all charged buffed, as I will just get Dragon Breath down. So I take the energy on Gligar, this point, I, I am expecting like a steel type in the back, a Reggie Steel, a Lowland Zen Slash. They are common ones, maybe even Skarmory. In that case, Magnazone is my win condition. I I don't mind letting this energy go on, on my Gligar. Get to double dig versus the Lickitung as well, which is huge. Bring him deep into the red. Again, I don't want to have to shield, so I bring out Azumarill here. Also, because it's Altaria lead, I'm expecting an answer to Azumarill on the back. So I'm super fine with just taking his energy. I'm really hoping that Magnazone can just sweep the game at this point. So we take both attacks here, a power up and the body slam. Um, I could have considered... Oh, actually, no, the bubble knocks out. I was going to say I could have considered even switching out the Magnazone there to get an extra Volt Switch. But no, they went down to the bubble, so there's no need. Out comes Altaria now. It was a Reggie Steel as well, so I bring out Magnazone. Out comes Altaria. And uh, I overform just a little bit so I can get to double Wild Charge before I can get to double Focus Blast for sure. And that should pretty much seal the deal. Magnazone is super low HP, but it has enough HP to uh, to take these lock ons to get to double wild charge. Still, I make sure I build up to double wild charge before throwing it. I'm not sure, but it could be the case that if I throw a wild charge, my defenses are dropped enough where lock ons will do more damage. So just build up to double wild charge, throw the first, does a lot of damage, and then we throw the second, and that knocks out that Magnazone. I've I've played this Magnazone Regis Seal matchup a ton, and I just really really like it as magnazone as you take pretty much no damage from those lock-ons so as long as you have shields you're in a very very good spot there carbink lead is another another pretty pretty good lead honestly uh magnazone steel damage output is kind of disappointing as mirror shot is a pretty bad attack damage wise it can get the attack drop which is just cool but it's only it's a low chance so you don't often get it and as you can see that is double super effective attack coming from a shadow magna zone and it does like nothing so and i have to shoot the rock slide pretty much otherwise they can farm me down afterwards if they use another shield so it's not an amazing matchup but it's a pretty good matchup this is another one of those matchups which is pretty good wild charge won't do that much well it will do a lot but it's a freaking cresselia so it does a disappointing amount but still enough for, like, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage on the Cresselia. Just a, not as much as you would hope from a Shadow Magnet Zone. And I definitely got to get out of there because uh, I was, like, quad stage debuffed. At that point, a Grass Knot would have definitely taken out my Magnet Zone. So I switch out the Gligar. Throw the area away here before I can go get to the next attack. And they actually shield it, which is really, really nice for me. And I'm, because they shield it, I'm expecting them to be weak against Gligar in the back. So I actually shield up their future side. Out comes Carbink, I'll pace him to a dig, which is huge. And now I think it's probably something like Trevenant in the back. But we'll never see, because my opponent actually ends up conceding the game. But uh, usually with Carbink, Cresselia is like Trevenant in the back, which, uh, given that uh, Gligar does outpace Trevenant, means that I, I would have probably been fine there. Next up, another Whiskash lead. This time it's a regular Whiskash, and just like versus Shadow, I like to just switch in Gligar, throw Arioase immediately before they can fire off their Skull, and this forced my opponent to make a decision early. This time they decide to let it go, as I mean, regular Whiskash can take that easily. I'm gonna shoot the Skull. I don't get the debuff, which is huge, as they sw switch in Licky Tongue. And since their mud shots is lit, like no damage, and I have a little bit of energy, I should be able to get the double dig and either get him into range where I can easily full switch down, or or even take a shield if my opponent really wants to take switch advantage. So this puts me in a pretty okay position, not great still, as it's still looking like I'll definitely get the Magnazone aligned to the Whiskash. 
but it's like not the worst. As the wish cache has already taken a areaways, it should be uh, closing in on, on wow charge range at, at, at least. Anyway, my opponent has some pretty good timing there. There's a bullet slam right before my next areaways. I let it go. Now I bring out zone. I don't even wait at a timer because I, I, I want all this farm, to be honest. I don't really want to switch out because this could be like an annihilate in the back, to be honest. And if it's like an annihilate in the back, I, I would prefer them to not be able to switch out the Likita. I even tried to catch a bullet slam there because this next one would do a lot on my Magnezone, bringing it into the red. Um... I have a wild charge stored now and I switch it to Azu because I don't want to take any more fossil damage. I'll just keep that wild charge uh, stored for later. Bubble down uh, the Licky Tongue and I bring out Whiskash. This is interesting. This could mean it's maybe Gligar in the back. Maybe something else weak to Azumarill. Maybe a fire type. Could be Talonflame. All of those would honestly be hit very hard with my, with my wild charge. So I'm not feeling too bad about this. I'm going to play rough to Whiskash. Doesn't take him out just yet, and it is the Gligar in the back. They switch it out, or they switch it in right now. They couldn't shield there, as then uh, they would have no shields to protect their Gligar from his Ice Beam. So that no shield made sense. But yeah, I still have enough health to survive a dig on my Azumarill. So I don't even have to shield this. But since I'm expecting to, to just throw the dig, I do shield. Then I bring out that Magnezone. Honestly, unnecessary. But I just really wanted to see how much this did or does and it does a ton of damage to the Gligar not enough though but I still get to the mirror shot here this will certainly knock out the Gligar and then hopefully I can uh, Voltrish down the, the Whiskash too but no I got down to a single match shot uh, they shouldn't have an attack though wouldn't even knock me out let me bubble down GG next up we're faced off first another very bad lead Annihilate into my Magnezone I switch to Gligars always and out comes the absolute worst thing possible to see come into a Shadow Gligar Dugong which can just completely farm me down they actually end up shooting this dig which surprised me and actually in every single uh i faced this dugong i faced this scenario several times where i was switching gligar and i brought a dugong and i never ever was able to get to double dig so in this case i just go i just i spam the area ways hoping to get it and i get it and i'm like wow i must have got unlucky and they like lag turn. no I actually survived the ice shard which means i actually would have been able to do one more wing attack and get to the dig there so yeah, next time, I'm definitely gonna just try to go for the dig. Apparently, sometimes you can get it. It might be like a bulk point or something you can reach versus Dugong, where where Ice Shards may do, like, less damage, which allows you to get to two digs. So, yeah, I don't think mine reached that versus most Dugong, but versus this one, it, it may have, because uh, I would have been able to get the double dig there, which is kind of crazy. Uh, they're Icy winning my Azumarill, which is kind of wild. I think this is now the, the third Icy Wind. That's crazy. Um, I Again, I brought out Azumarill here because they had drill runs, which would one-shot my, my Magnezone. Uh, I didn't want to throw another attack with my Azu into the Dugong, so I decided to try to farm it down with my Magnezone, but unfortunately, they're quick enough to react and throw uh, the drill run. Unfortunately, that means I won't get to two charge attacks versus this Annihilate with my Magnezone. Uh, actually, no, that doesn't... That, that means I had to use a shield. And I make a big mistake. I forget which side my... Oh, my God. Oh, no. Okay, this is a terrible game. I forget which side my player of was on. <laughs> I throw Ice Beam. I would have just been able to knock out this Annihilate. Dang. That's so... Why did I include this battle? Well, you know why I included this battle. This happens, dude. You know, sometimes you get hard countered. Sometimes you make the worst plays imaginable. And, and sometimes you do both. It happens. It happens to everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, it's Bastion in the back, though, so it would not have mattered. It would not have mattered whatsoever, as that Pokemon just, just walls Azumarill with my moveset. Anyway, final battle. Final battle. I actually faced a Magnezone Mirror lead. How exciting. Honestly, I have no clue how to play this out correctly. Uh, my Magnezone is very low attack, so I never go for CMP there. I just over farm as much as possible. I shield it there, because Wild Charge will do so much already. It's a Mirror Shield bait, which is just kind of bad. And then they no-shield my Mirror Shield bait. This is going very bad. I do get the attack drop, which is nice, but I don't think I'll be able to survive a, a Wild Charge even still. So I decided to shield it up. I've now double shielded my Magnezone in the lead. Not the best thing to do, but I have so much energy that I'll likely get at least one back here i am confident i'm gonna get at least one back here as i throw a mirror shot bait here. if they no shield here i'm in shambles but no luckily they shield it i even get another attack drop this is crazy wow that's where all my luck must have gone um 
Because I haven't been getting very lucky with the debuffs lately, but no, this, this Magnezone is just popping off right now with the Mirror Shot debuffs. Definitely helping me out in this matchup, as I'll be able to take these two Body Slams uh, much easier and get a, get a nice farm down. Actually, no, never mind that. I throw an Aerial Ace, as I guess they were about to get to another Body Slam. Yep, bye-bye, Licky. Okay. Their Magnezone is dry, so if they were to bring it out... Oh, wow! I, think I catch a Dago Magnezone, which is crazy! Oh, wow, this is... Okay, I... Again, these battles were from like half a week ago. I didn't really remember that part. That's crazy. But yeah, it's wiggly tough. That actually kind of made it a little more tough for me because uh, that means they have another shield left to use. But I mean, luckily I have a very bulky Pokemon in the back in a Zubral and I was able to take the Fighter Shield with Mirror Shot. So this should be looking very fine. Uh, they are throwing Icy Wind here, which will make it a little harder to take out this wiggly tough. But I'm in a Zubral. I'm thick. We throw a play rough, and then I should be able to bubble down, or even get to an Ice Beam. Uh, the better play there would have been to double Ice Beam, by the way. I did not know how much a play rough would do. I thought I would be able to uh, play rough and bubble down, but since I, I didn't, the better play there would have been to just double Ice Beam, and that's, as that would have also been enough to knock out, and it was, would have also taken one bubble less. But it didn't matter. I survived the Disarming Voice. I take out the Wigglytuff, and that's a GG. That's also the final battle of the video, uh, by the way. Again, I really, really, really do recommend this team. It is so much fun to run. It has so much play, even into bad leads. As long as you don't see a Dugong come into your Gligar pivot, like, you're, you're doing pretty good with this squad, and... Yeah, I, I recommend it next time Greatly comes out. Anyway, if you're interested in the video, please leave a like, sub, you know, whatever. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Good luck with your battles. Trainers. Bye-bye.